Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Lots to cover today, and if you made it to today's show, you're in for a special treat. Some deep revelations just hours ago by the Holy Spirit of the true meaning of doorways. Now, we're also going to get into many other things today. We're going to look at Taylor Swift and her concert and what happened. There was a mass amnesia event relating back to doorways and consciousness. We're also going to start another series called The Ark. It's about the last of humanity exploring space to find a new home, which is all fake, of course. But there was one particular episode about how they basically medicate the entire ship by putting it in the water because they don't have enough time to give everybody shots. So I've got clips from that new TV episode today. I'll show you guys that. And then we're going to go back to a story that broke at the beginning of June that I missed. And that was the amnesia at the Taylor Swift concert. Now, I normally don't cover many of these celebrities. Every once in a while, we'll cover one if it relates directly into, you know, the agenda and the timeline and all that. But we were talking about amnesia being a side effect of a particular thing, weren't we? We did a couple of decodes on a couple of science fiction movies in which they had amnesia of smell and amnesia of taste. And eventually, the entire neurological slate was wiped clean in preparation for the transfer of consciousness and sharing it with the twin spirit. So we're going to get into all that today. We're going to start with the Taylor Swift report. Then we're going to do the ARC TV series. And then we'll end the show with the Ozark Honey Milk Ranch electrical install that I did the other day. So I can't wait to show you that. We'll do that at the end of the show. So what is going on with Taylor Swift's fans? BBC News. Taylor Swift fans report amnesia following ERA's show. Now, how does this tie into the decodes that we did on amnesia during the pandemic? Well, the fans went on to social media and they noticed a pattern as to their experience at Taylor Swift's new concert, the ERA's tour. What was the pattern? They couldn't remember anything. Now, this article goes on to try to downplay this mass amnesia event. They try to say this is normal, rationalizing that, you know, the emotions behind the event can reset memories and all this stuff, which should sound very familiar to you because we just talked about that, didn't we? About how they can change your memories through an emotional event. Remember we were talking about the Mandela effect? And they were already doing studies on this in 2014. You know, and the experiment was they basically triggered the person's emotions and then they rewrote their memories. And remember I told you that when 9-11 happened, that was the mass emotional event that they could have used to change our memories. Remember all that? Well... This is the actual justification that psychologists are saying caused this post-concert amnesia. None of this is by accident, you guys. I almost didn't cover this story. One of you said, Casey, you got to look at Taylor Swift. She did a concert. This was back on June 1st, and everybody got amnesia. And then lo and behold, there's a connection to how this could have happened. Psychologists say emotions and time may be behind the phenomenon. So, what else happened? Well, they're also trying to justify this by saying that the concert was just so good. It was so good. And what it did is it 
it passed time so quickly that people forgot the experience. This is literally what they're saying in this article. That the concerts of today are so much stimulus and joy and great music. This is what they're saying here in the article. That time passes so fast and you forget what you actually experienced. This makes absolutely no sense. So let's break down what actually happened here. Now... I started digging into this just this morning because I just got an email or something from one of you guys about two hours ago. I woke up, had my coffee, coffee, and I was feverishly putting this together. And that's when the revelations started happening. Let me check in with you guys and I'll show you what we found. Good morning. All right, let's begin here. Now, several fans noticed that there were no COVID precautions taken for the concert. This was my first clue. They were like, something's going on. It's different. Normally, she was all about everybody getting jabbed. And all of a sudden, there were absolutely no precautions. That's a clue, right? So that leaves us with the concert itself. What happened there that caused people to forget? Now, we decoded two science fiction films. One was called Senses, I think, and the other one had, uh, I can't remember now, but there were two specific films. Virus films that caused people to forget each other and to lose all their senses. So you have to ask yourself, could something have been deployed at this concert? Like a virus or maybe a frequency that worked in conjunction with something else. It seemed odd that to the fans that there was no vaccine requirement. People thought, were well, like, that's weird. And so maybe they needed a control group. No vaccinations, no negative tests, no masks. This sounds a lot like a control group to me. Some kind of experiment. And then there was the song set. Just so happens to be 44 songs long. That's half of 88, which is a portal number, isn't it? Now, the tour was even named after all of the eras, the time periods throughout her career that she produced music through. So, essentially, what she's doing here is taking you through portals of history and time, a journey through all her musical eras, and that's in her own words. Now, if you don't believe me about the 44 songs, understand that there were four times four dancers. There were 16 dancers. So there's your 88. We have four times four dancers, and we have 44 songs. This was a ritual concert series and tour. So the question becomes, with all of the most familiar songs of her career being performed, how is it that people forgot? Now, one of these songs, let's scroll down here, some of the images from the concert tour. I think it began in Arizona, I want to say. But look at this. And this was the thumbnail of the show today. Doorways. Look at all of the people in the doorways, in the portals. Kind of like the film Monsters, Inc., where the monsters came into our reality through the nightmares of children, through doorways. And then down here, she says, it's been a long wait back to this moment, but karma is indeed a queen, and this was worth the wait. These were her words. So there's a new age component to this, isn't there? Now, 
The reason why this tour was notable was because there were a record number of costume changes as she pulled the audience through time. And this reminded me of something. It reminded me of Clark Kent changing into Superman by entering the phone booth portals. If you don't know about the phone booths and why they're portals, you got to go back and look at all of my phone booth videos. And how even the Twin Towers were created in the image of a phone booth or phone booths. This is all very real. Now, throughout these costume changes, she transformed many, many times, and then it hit me. Taylor Swift's costume changes are a metaphor for the demon spirit hopping into different host bodies, or the demon spirits manifesting themselves out of one host body. It's a persona. And concerts like this, something is happening here. It seems to program people to accept the demon that comes out in you. And the demons fill a person and they manifest one by one in the shape or form of the different costumes that the people wear. Now we all know this. We've seen people do this. And we've talked about this over the years, haven't we? We've talked about how the elite controllers create personas that then possess all of us into acting a certain way. And when you put on those clothes, when you put on that costume, then the demon comes out. Now, what am I talking about? Well, even trends, trends, personas, you guys know what it is. The sports persona, the people that walk around with jerseys for their team. We also have the girls' night out persona. Dress a certain way, heavy makeup, eyeshadow, look like a completely different person. We have all kinds of different personas that we project, don't we? Where did we get these personas from? From the controllers. They're the ones that created these personas to basically cause you to act a certain way when you put on these costumes, when we don the mask, when we don the costume. Now, these are ancient rituals and they are originated all the way back to the beginning of time. A more recent manifestation of these costumes would be the Venetian costume masks, the Illuminati. And they could be whoever they wanted to be, hiding behind the facade of a mask. Which, of course, when that happens, when you put the mask on, you unmask the demon. That's how it works. Now, if you still don't believe all this, I'm going to bring it all home for you. Because this is crazy. And here was the revelation that I got this morning. Remember, it was through a doorway portal that the last plague of Egypt, the very first Passover, occurred. The marking of the post and lentil. Taking us through a narrow gate to everlasting life. Through the lamb sacrifice, which would ultimately be the final lamb sacrifice, which was Jesus, who also honored the Passover. The passing over into eternity. Yes, the door was a portal. And this is why, once you accept Jesus Christ, you are already grafted into the eternal timeline. This is why Jesus said, it is finished. 
Because it doesn't matter where you are in the timeline, you go to eternity. You're just waiting to wait out this timeline before that happens. But you've essentially already gone through the gate. Because in Jesus' timeline, in the eternal timeline, you've already been written into the book of life. This was the revelation I had this morning. This is a gate. Through Jesus' sacrifice. There's only one way to the Father, and that is through the Son. What a gift that is. So, what is the enemy's alternate version of this? Well, it would be a wide gate. Right? A legion of demons using doorways to go into your soul. A legion of doorways to go into your soul through the timeline. And this is how demons made it down to the last days. They jumped from body to body to body through the doorways, through the personas, down into the last days. I told you guys this was going to be a powerful show today. Now, I know some of you out there still don't believe what I'm telling you. But understand this. With the Most High, the punishment always fits the crime. Remember the ten plagues? Well, the Most High took the Pharaoh through a series of punishments during each of the ten plagues. And that related directly back to their own pagan practices. You see, the Egyptians were the first ones to start working on consciousness transfer or demonic possession. But it's consciousness transfer is, is what they're calling it now. And why were the Egyptians working on this? Because they wanted to reanimate in the end times. This is why they preserved the black goo in the canopic jars to reanimate, make a clone of themselves, and then repossess it. Consciousness transfer. And that, what I just described to you, is the opposite of being filled with the Holy Spirit. And this is why Jesus said, the eye is the lamp of the body. And either it's full of light or it's full of darkness. You can't have both inhabiting the lamp. You're either filled with the Holy Spirit or you're filled with the dark spirit. Now, the last plague was the doorway to salvation, wasn't it? And if the Egyptians did not mark their post and lentil with the blood of the Lamb, which would later become Jesus, right? He honored the Passover. And then he became the sacrificial lamb to end all sacrifice, right? So we could all go through the door. So how did the punishment fit the crime? Because the Egyptian firstborn were all killed. Just like God gave his firstborn, his only begotten son, to save us all. The Pharaoh's firstborns were sacrificed because they did not put the blood of the lamb on the post and lintel. So how did the punishment fit the crime? I'm going to show you right now. Because the Egyptians were making false doors to other realities and consciousness. Let's read. 
the false doors of Egyptian tombs, a threshold between the worlds of the living and the dead. Now there are some pictures of these false doors. Can you see the juxtaposition now? Can you see the dichotomy? Can you see the good versus the evil yet? The doorway, the narrow gate to Jesus Christ, and the wide gate to the multiple demons, the multiple doorways that come into you and possess you. Are you starting to see it? And if you are, then you need to accept Jesus Christ. Look at this false door. It is doors within doors. It's the scare floor. It's exactly what you're looking at here. Let's read about this. A false door or recessed niche is an artistic representation of a door which does not function like a real door. They can be carved in a wall or painted on it. Now, interestingly, these false doors are found all around the world, not just in ancient Egypt. They're found in antiquity, carved into stone across different cultures who are not supposed to be related to one another. They are a common architectural element in the tombs of ancient Egypt, but appeared possibly earlier in some pre neuragic Sardinian tombs. Later, they also occur in Etruscan tombs, and in the time of ancient Rome, they were used in the interiors of both houses and tombs. Egyptian architecture was influenced by Mesopotamian precedents, as it adopted elements of Mesopotamian temple and civic architecture. These exchanges were part of Egypt-Mesopotamia relations since the 4th millennium BC. Recessed niches were characteristic of Mesopotamian temple architecture and were adopted in Egyptian architecture especially for the design of false doors. It is unknown if the transfer of this design was a result of Mesopotamian workmen in Egypt or if temple designs appearing on imported Mesopotamian seals may have been a sufficient source of inspiration for Egyptian architects. The ancient Egyptians believed that the false door was a threshold between the worlds of the living and the dead, and through which a deity or spirit of the deceased could enter or exit. The Egyptian false doors was their method of passing through and possessing people. The false door was usually the focus of a tomb's offering chapel, where family members could place offerings for the deceased on a special offering slab placed in front of the door. So this was like their form of sacrifice, right? This is the false sacrifice, placing offerings in front of the door. So God came with his version. Most false doors are found on the west wall of a funerary chapel or offering chamber because the ancient Egyptians associated the west with the land of the dead. In many mastabas, both husband and the wife buried within have their own false door. Look at these things. Structure. A false door usually is carved from a single block of stone or plank of wood, and it was not meant to function as a normal door. Located in the center of the door is a flat panel or niche around which several pairs of doors, door jams, are arranged. Some convey the illusion of depth in a series of frames, a foyer, or a passageway, a semi-cylindrical drum carved directly above the central panel. It was used in imitation of the reed mat that was used to close real doors. So as you can see, these were concentric doors. It almost look like some kind of optical illusion or a mirror standing in a mirror with a mirror behind you and seeing into infinity. This is what these doors look like. The door is framed with a series of moldings and lintels as well and an offering seen depicting the deceased in front of a table of offerings usually in car is carved above the center of the door a table of offerings like the Last Supper. 
Do you see how the enemy has a counterfeit for everything that God does that is good? Sometimes the owners of the tomb had status, statues I'm sorry, carved in their image, placed into the central niche of the false door. So that would be a false idol, right? So I'll put a link to this, but I think we just busted this one wide open. Well, we didn't do it. This is a Holy Spirit inspiration. Never ever take credit for the things that God reveals to you. Unbelievable. Now there's a Wikipedia article on this as well. A false door or assessed niche. Artistic representation of a door which does not function like a real door. And it goes into this all about ancient Egypt and confirms everything I just showed you. Now, I could not believe it when this was revealed to me this morning. But this is exactly what happened at this concert. So these amnesia concerts are shaping up to be some kind of mass possession ritual event. Very weird. Now, before we get into this series called The Ark. Interesting, right? Interesting how God reveals these things and they all connect together. Because the Ark was like the Ark of the Covenant directly after the Exodus out of Egypt. So we're going to be covering the new sci-fi series called The Ark. And it too contains a lot of stuff that confirms what we've covered in the past that is now catching up with our current timeline. Remember, we look in hindsight, we find things that relate directly to the current timeline. Things are happening right now. And this proves that all of this has been orchestrated. Now, if I were to recommend this series, I would definitely recommend it. It falls at about a 7 out of 10 production value compared. Well, it's got good, um, you know, special effects and everything. It's decent, I guess. But there's so much disclosure in this is why it gets a 7. Now, just to give you, you know, baseline... Uh, I would give a TV series like Battlestar Galactica, I would the remake, I would give that about a 9. So this, this series, the arc, is about a 7. It's not great, but it discloses a lot of stuff. Now each one of these episodes has its own premise. As this crew awakens in mid-space. They're in cryosleep, and they wake up, and they realize that the ship has been struck by something. And their entire leadership was killed. And so they have to scramble to figure everything out. And then it's revealed in this episode that I'm going to show you next. That this leader who assumes the leadership after the whole leadership is killed. She's actually a clone. Now the clone discovery happens after the crew is infected by some bad comet water. They literally come in contact with a comet. They need water. They hook up to this comet. They get the water. And then they all get infected with these weird hallucinations. They all start hallucinating. People that their loved ones. People that are already dead. It's like they're seeing ghosts. But this leader here. She's immune because she's a clone. And she has special blood. Now, this is all probably sounding familiar because many of you will remember the TV series that I decoded called Archive 81. can't remember if that was a TV series or a movie. But that was all about a comet that caused a plague. It caused a plague and a mold apocalypse here on Earth. There was a portal that was opened in that movie, Archive 81. We have the decode right here on the channel. And we realized a very long time ago that there was something different about comets. And we looked back through history and we found ancient writings of mass plagues that would happen during these close approaches of comets. Many of you will remember all the discussions we had just after this channel began. Back nine years ago, in 2013, 
There it is right there. We were warning about a plague. Why? There were several comets that came through right around this time. Comet Ison, Comet Negra was one that caused a plague 666 years ago before 2013. Back in 1347. And we were looking at this. We found these ancient writings. I'll play a little clip of this. This was 2013, you guys. Stars, and I want to give a thank you to Wildar Hody, YouTuber that brought this to my attention. You guys, this is a comet that came through in 1347, exactly 666 years to the day in a few months. I'm just going to read this. This is a history textbook. Now, the people in this historical record said that as the comet approached, a plague happened. And they go on to describe that. I'll put a link to this video in the pinned comment. Now, back then, the pandemic scare was Ebola. But we were on the trail back then, exposing this. And we knew that Ebola was not the end of it. Now, what is this about? Well, does the comet actually bring a plague? I don't think so. I think these people worship these heavenly bodies and comets. And they coordinate their plagues with the comets. That's what I think is really happening. But I don't know. Anyway, in this episode... Of the ark. The crew is running out of water. They, they tether to the comet to recharge. The comet contains this LSD like compound that causes them to hallucinate. Now, science keeps telling us that plants like mushrooms and psychedelics, they keep trying to tell us that they're alien, don't they? Why do they keep trying to tell us that? They try to tell us that these things came from comets. And from other worlds. Don't they? And I wonder if when the alien disclosure hits full stride. In other words. When there's aliens. What they say are aliens. Walking among us. I wonder if the psychedelic plants will be part of the deception. I wonder if these alien demons won't weaponize these psychedelics to deceive the world. And or offer cures to certain things. And that will open people up for demonic possession. Because they sure are pushing this alien plant thing, aren't they? Through all these sci-fi series and in also in regular science. Now, let's start watching these clips here. Understand his wife? Come to me now about your genetics. So, this is the captain of the ship. And she's telling her doctor, this lady here, that she's a clone. The doctor's like, why are you telling me this now? I'm a clone. My DNA has tardigrade right genomes. I've been drinking the water just as long as everyone else, but I've had no hallucinations. If you can find out why, maybe you can find a cure. So she tells her, look, you can use me. Use me as the test subject. I'm not affected. There's something in my blood, something in my DNA that's preventing me from being affected by this. You guys, this is hardcore disclosure here. So, the entire ship is coming out with these hallucinations and there's nobody left to vaccinate anybody. So what do they do? They put the cure in the water. What is the cure? Her blood. The clone blood. Which I believe is the pharaoh clone blood. The Nephilim gene. Watch. So you're just saying we need to put whatever's in this vial into the water and that's going to kill Injecting crew one at a time with no medical staff would take forever. It looks like Dr. Kabea thought that putting the protein in the water system would create a faster distribution system. Crazy, right? That is crazy disclosure right there. I never knew where the donor cell came from other than that it was completely human. 
who are clones, born in a classified government lab. They use different DNA strands in each of us, testing us for different outcomes. I don't know what they put in Denise. Since we were clones, we were identical in every way, so we were the perfect subjects to compare and contrast. How fast could we recover from zero gravity? How long could we last without oxygen? One day when we were older, Dr. Hall was testing how long we could hold our breath. Testing to see how long we could go without oxygen. Uh, that's what happened during the pandemic, right? Because such a genius if you don't think I'm carefully regulating the amount of water that You're a genius mm -hmm. It's the water What? The comet It was the introduction of foreign DNA that made Denise dangerous But you had for foreign DNA What have we been trying to tell you guys For the last three or four years that they are trying to integrate foreign DNA into the human genome. But you had foreign DNA put in you too. Look, I think we all understand the risks of leaving Sharon in charge. The second tier clones became psychotic. For the record, I'm first tier. First tier clones are no different than in vitro babies. I'm human, just like anyone else. Understand is... Is this why they're pushing in vitro? Is this why they're pushing in vitro births? Is this the reason for the same-sex agenda where the only option to have a child or one of the few options is in vitro, which will ultimately be clones, so that the new generation will be easily possessable? This is crazy, you guys. First tier. First tier clones are no different than in vitro babies. I'm human, just like anyone else. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Now, let me check in with you guys before we get into the Honey Milk Ranch. I'm going to finish up this first season of the series. It's only one season so far of The Ark, which is the clips that you just saw. And then also, we're going to keep wading through the Blacklist series. But I realized that's 10 seasons of Blacklist. And I've only gotten through the first season. And so I wanted to kind of mix it up with something else. Because Blacklist is like really crazy. But, wow. That's all I could say. Now, let me check in with you guys for a little bit. And for those of you who want to stick around for the Honey Milk Ranch do-it-yourself project that I did. It's about 15 minutes long. Let me see what you guys... What episode is that? That's the episode about the water. And the comet. I don't know the name of the episode. But I think I'm on episode 5 or so. Of the arc. I'll give you guys an opportunity for, to provide any feedback. Before we get into the Honey Milk Ranch. Okay. Have I decoded the John Wick movies? Uh, I think I tried to look at those. There are some movie series that, believe it or not, don't have an awful lot of disclosure. And I'm not a big Keanu Reeves fan. Uh, the Matrix and all that was good. But I'm not a fan of the John Wick series. So, all right. Yes, as in the days of Noah shall be in the last days. This is how we know all this is going to happen again. Nothing new under the sun. Nothing new under the sun. All right, well, let's get into the Honey Milk Ranch. I want to end on a positive note. <laughs> Here we go. Hey, guys. Well, I told you guys I was going to uh, do some more Honey Milk Ranch videos. And I was feeling a little bit overwhelmed because there's still some final touches left to do here in the property. And like the ceiling, I want to get this done or mostly most of the way done before Max gets here. So there isn't stuff all over the place. As you can see, there's wood on the ground. There's wood everywhere that needs to go up in the ceiling. So I've got my friend Scott coming. He's gonna help me get the ceiling up. But before we do, I need to get these electrical uh, panels in here. Now I got these lights here. I wanna show you guys my lights. These are on Amazon for super cheap. And they're uh, dimmable 
and you definitely want to make sure you pick the correct uh, brightness because if you now these are LED lights and I know a lot of people aren't into LED lights so do not buy these if you're not into LED lights but I'm sure there are other alternatives um, you know we're moving toward an LED future they're making incandescent bulbs obsolete so when you're building a house I didn't want to keep hanging on to the old technology and then have to rewire the house and spend thousands and thousands of dollars to do that so some of this stuff is just going to happen and there's very little we can do to kind of fight it now I know that Ben's family his wife does not like LED lights he's awake too and so she's not a fan of the LED they're gonna hold on as long as they possibly can but understand the the beast agenda is taking you down their set path and when it comes to consumerism there isn't much we can do when it comes to stuff like this I mean unless I want to go by candlelight and I don't want to go that extreme okay but I'm just disclosing that to you so that you don't buy these and go oh Casey told me to buy L LED lights no I'm not telling you to buy LED lights okay if you go way too bright it's gonna look like a hospital and if you go way down to the yellow spectrum it's gonna look like an old <laughs> old gross 1980s you know disco four so I don't know anyway I picked one kind of in the middle I can't remember how many lumens I got but here's the box let's see here and these come in a 16 pack they're not that expensive there's the brand I didn't want it too white and I didn't want it too yellow 110 watt 12 watt uh, I think I did 3000 Kelvin on these ones which puts you kind of right in the middle of this of the color spectrum so it's not too bright bright white to where it looks like a hospital and it's not too dark to where it looks like a den or something you can get 16 of these things for not very much I think I paid 150 bucks for 16 of those um, this is these are six inch size and this is just a little do-it-yourself thing that you can do here so very very important and what I'm going to show you guys next because Scott's coming to put the rest of the ceiling up I need to get these fixtures in so I already did a couple of these as you can see here and I wanted to show you guys how I did it because I just jumped in and did it now the power's off except for the air conditioner I got all the power off in the house so I'm not going to electrocute myself but it's actually pretty simple and there's two different kinds here let me show you the two different kinds This is just a straight switch. Let's get a little closer. This is so there's two kinds of wiring in the house: straight switches, well, just a black, a white, and a ground. But then on the dimmable ones that are all connected, those ones have two white, two black, and one ground. Just a straight switch, and uh, as you can see, there's one black, one white, and one green. And that's power negative in the ground I believe you just match them up it's pretty simple and these little things here you push the wire into it you kind of got to push it hard so it's a little bit difficult but you, if you can't do it you got to use pliers and push it in and once you do that um, it connects it so it's pretty easy this box came with this light and once you get the box hooked up to the wires then you just screw on the light there now if I were to turn the power on you would see that these this is on a straight light that one's on a dimmer because it's got two white wires and two black wires now I believe maybe the double wires is because they're all in one circuit not that they're dimmable or not so I correct I want to correct that just so you guys don't get confused so in other words I just showed you a light with one black and one white well that's because it's on its own circuit it's not collect connected to another light or something whereas the other ones are connected kind of like uh, I guess Christmas lights I guess you could say let me show you that two white wires and two black wires see that so they have extra slots on this little thing here and you can put as many as you want but um, I'm just going to put the two and the two so it's pretty simple when I first looked at it it looked really confusing 
but once you see that really you're just matching up colors then it's super super easy and i'm like you know what i can save myself probably this would have been a day's work for my contractor which would have cost me like three or four hundred dollars so i'm gonna do it myself and i just saved myself three or four hundred dollars he might have got it done a little bit quicker than that but i'm gonna do one with you guys together so you can see how this works these are the tools you need just this you can actually use a, uh, a pliers that are specific for uh, electrical but these work just fine they have a wire cutter on them and they can also grab the wire so here we go i'm going to do this one real time for you guys so you can see it takes about five minutes per as long as you take your time you'll be good i got a gnat here come on gnat why are you up here you know, all up in my grill okay so first you take these off ah, it's like he knows i'm filming oh geez they're so annoying I don't know if you guys know, but it's gnat season right now. Gnats advance. So you pull all the wires off. Then you got to unscrew them or untwist them. Let's do this real time for you guys. Now I've done, like I said, five or six of these so far. So it goes a little bit faster. Move it out to the side. Now I ain't no electrician, but this is, this is easy, you guys. If you got some pliers and some time and you want to save yourself you know an electrician might even charge a little bit more than this to do this maybe you know 600 bucks to come out get the wires off of there and then you got to straighten them out because they only go in these pegs when you have them straightened out if you don't have them straightened out it's not going to work then you want to clip it to about gosh i guess that's three quarters of an inch about there there we go. Straighten out the white one. Just real time for you guys. No editing required because it's about that simple. Clip off the end there. Got to go up a level. Let's get this on here if you guys can see this. Okay. that going there just get it nice and straightened out and clip the end off you don't want too much of that wire exposed you want just enough to feed into this little box you'll see it in a second when I pull this out that one's a little bit long uh, okay so that's what you want there you want that. He's nice and straight. Now here's the box. Open the box. Pull these wires out and see the colors just match up. Except for the green, but that's that's the obvious. So here's the black. Let's start there. For some reason the black's always where I've been starting. Here's a little trick. When you put it in here, go for the one next to the existing wire and you give it a little bit of a twist. For some reason, it goes in easier. And once it goes in, you'll see the wire right there pushing against the glass that means you got it all the way in the first couple ones i did i didn't push hard enough i think i was afraid and i'm not sure if i had it in then i usually go to this outside one just because it gives you more room to work twist and a push and you see it's in there boom enter the stars electrician <laughs> here we go with the white put twist boom next one now obviously I would never attempt to rewire an entire house or anything like that. I'm not saying that you should try anything like that. But stuff like this, when your electrician's on to other jobs or they're busy or they give you some astronomical price. Because what's happening now is a lot of these electricians are charging astronomical prices because they've got so much work that they can charge whatever they want now. So there's the finished product. I know I didn't go through the side here because I don't need to. All this is going to be pushed up behind the uh, the tongue and groove. The only thing you're going to see is the hole and this white wire hanging out with a light on it, which will be pushed up into the hole, has clips. So, what else? Oh, 
you need yourself one of these to drill through the wood obviously this is wider than the actual wood but i'm going to have him mark it and then i can we can drill through the wood there and then this is the exact size you need to put to install these lights so pretty cool huh all right let me get these all done i'll turn it on and i'll do a test for you guys so you guys can see hopefully i don't blow up my house okay last one now i got some really good advice from my neighbor uh richard and he we troubleshooted what we're going to do with these inside window casings as you can see it's rough um what do you do how do you treat the inside of that window to hide the stud and provide a nice frame for the window and of course hide the edge of the drywall and i think what we're going to do is use cedar and this is again something i was going to hire ben to do but he's on to bigger projects and so i'm going to attempt to do it myself um i may need to purchase a nail gun at some point just because that it will go way quicker with the nail gun so that's the next part of the project but the lumber alone for all my windows is i think i calculated it's about 700 dollars worth of cedar one by three planks and it's mostly one by three but i do need a few one by sixes for some other areas for some reason the sill in some areas is four inches instead of three inches so, so i said one by three but i actually need one by fours and so that's what I need for this. And it's it's actually closer to about $1,000 worth of wood to, to basically frame in the entire house in the, the uh, God, what do they call this? Uh, I guess they call this the inside trim of the window. So uh, I want to include you guys on that project because I want to show you the costs, um, you know, cutting the different wood and installing it because this might be something you might want to do. Now, why am I doing cedar instead of regular window trim that has molding on it and stuff? Because obviously this is going to create a rough look, right? Because it's just going to be cedar. Now, the cedar planks come with one side finished and one side rough. So I'll probably use the finished side for, for this. So it'll look decent. But the reason why I'm using cedar is because I don't want to paint a bunch of trim. I just want it to be natural. I want the natural cedar to have the look to it. And I also want... It to keep the bugs out because bugs don't particularly want to eat cedar okay and so you're not going to get termites trying to eat the cedar to get in so there's multiple reasons uh for it and also it's something pretty simple that i can do probably but i'll have to get a nail gun so i'm just giving you some general costs cost estimates if this is something you are considering wanting to do i just keep listening here so that's kind of the update on what's going to happen with the window trim that might be something that's probably not going to be done before max gets here and that's okay you know uh, i just wanted to before his room you know fills up with stuff get it get his room completely done it's mostly done i've got his blackout curtains in there which he loves because when he goes online everybody uses blackout curtains now so <laughs> but uh, i love him and i want to make this comfortable for him without a bunch of stress so that he can figure out what he's going to do moving forward as a young man. I, I remember being his age and uh, already at 24 years old, I had my daughter and uh, gosh, I had my first job already. I was out of college and uh, was raising a family uh, and, and my ex-wife was a stay-at-home mom. Um, so that was my path and my journey. But in today's day and age, you know, everything's weird now, you know, like people aren't getting married. Um, people are less dependable now. There's a lot of stuff going on and, and uh, you know, a lot of people don't want the commitment. Um, and it's hard because everyone's online now. And so everyone's kind of doing their own thing, you know, and it just makes it harder to connect with people. It's almost like, I don't know about you guys, but when the world passed through the portal of online and everything being online it's almost as if people have too many options now we went from a world where the people you dated was the proximity you were with one another right and you would write letters to people and that's where like the romance came in 
because you were writing, you actually sat down, took the time to write a letter to somebody, put a stamp on it, and mail it to them. And this is how people fell in love. Well, now, women have infinite options, and there's filters and everything, and next thing you know, you know, they can choose between probably hundreds of men who could suit them. And I, look, I don't blame them. It's like a child in a candy store. Which one are you going to choose? You can't eat all of them. So you got to pick one. How hard it is, is it going to be to pick one? Well, it's probably very difficult. Child in a candy store, it's almost impossible to pick just one. I remember my mom would take us to Old Sacramento and there was this candy store. And it's funny because I went back recently with her within the last several years. And the the cost of the candy like quadrupled. Like basically it's just a money pit in a tourist trap. But back when I was a child and my mom would take me in there, they were literally penny candies. Like you'd spend one cent per candy, right? And so we would take all of our money that we found in the gutters and on the street and save it up. And then we would go in there. Um, and we would get a bunch of candy, but sometimes she would be like, oh, well, you have to pick one or pick two. And I remember how impossible that was. There was about 50 things that I wanted. Well, it's the same thing with today's online world, right? It's like people have too many options. And then what happens is you can't settle on one. And then if you even do try to settle on one, there's infinite temptations for people, isn't there? Because now they're like, oh, maybe I should have picked that one. Or maybe I should have picked that one. And this is where you have to be grounded in your faith in the Holy Spirit. And you have to be a person of honor and pick one. And then just go with that. And be with that person for the rest of your life. Despite the enemy's temptations. Despite all the lies and stuff that it's floating around out there. And what I call the overstimulation of our reality. Everyone's overstimulated. Too many options. Let's keep watching here. So we have to pray for our young people. Because they're in huge trouble with everything going on in the world. I wanted to show you the walking stick. Where did he go? There was another one over here. There's like three different kinds. Now apparently they're all the same walking stick. But some of them... Um, are older some are younger anyway he's not there right now so thanks to all you guys who filled me on on what a walking stick is and how there's different how they're not different species of walking sticks it's the same walking stick but it's like either they're brand new and green or and as they get older they turn brown like just like a stick so here I'm going hey I have five species of walking stick no it was just the same kind of walking stick in, in different uh, stages of its life. <laughs> All right, let's finish this up here, you guys. I will find him later. Now, at some point, I need to attach the smoke alarms, and now I have the confidence to be able to do it. Now that I know how to do everything, I can probably install these smoke alarms. That gray box that you see right there, that is for the smoke alarm connection. And there's one in each room in the house, just for safety reasons and for code. Um, and so at some point, I'll attach those. I'm kind of waiting until the last possible minute because as you guys know as soon as you hook those batteries up they go out and next thing you know you're hitting chirping and beeping <laughs> all right let's, let's get the rest of these in all right so basically this is the light now of course I'll pull this plastic off at some point but basically what you have going on here is once uh, all the, the ceilings in he'll drill the hole with that drill I showed you and then you take these you put them inside and they snap right into place I think that this was a great choice. Um, a lot of people didn't even know that this existed. Um, that I, people that I talked to that are people that have done electrical before, this is, a, I guess, a new thing. It's so slim. Now, these are LED lights, of course, um, but everything's going to LED. In fact, you can barely buy incandescent bulbs anymore. Um, I know there are some health concerns with this for certain people, um, but this is what I chose going to the future I didn't want to have to rewire my whole house uh, when they switch everything over because they're really not going to give us a choice at this point in fact the string lights that you see out there let's get a view without the screen on it the string lights that you see out there those are incandescent bulbs 
but already they're saying that those are going to go obsolete very very soon so at that point i'll just those are some leftover string lights that i had so you know i'll just have to upgrade the led i guess i don't know but that's where everything's headed you guys all right we got the hallway hooked up i got that on dimmers too just because when you get to go to the bathroom you don't want you, you might leave this like on low you know okay so there's that Let's see what this one does i don't even remember how oh that's hold on okay okay so that's the dining room lights so these two lights will be over the dining room table so that's what that was <laughs> i don't even remember how i wired this thing okay and that's this is the porch light that's the porch light so okay good what's this <laughs> no idea wait okay that goes on this oh that has the dining room on dimmers cool and you can turn the dining room light off there apparently what's this about okay so that's the kitchen and that's on dimmers just because you know you're in the living room you want the kitchen light you don't want the direct light so that's good everything works okay that's the kitchen turn those off okay good then we come over wait okay good then oh boy that's the porch light okay all these lights must be here this I know is the porch light this oh, is the living room and of course you can dim that down that's cool so that's it you guys guess I did okay my house didn't blow up now I got to clean up all these clipped wires don't forget to clean up your clipped wires all right guys take care be safe so that's a 16 by 50 space that you saw there um, but the last part of that space is Bax's bedroom so the kitchen and and the living room and the dining room that all fits into the majority of that space and the max's is the last like eight feet or ten feet is the size of his room back there in the corner but um yeah i'm pleased with the way everything turned out um the electrician did a great job so i just basically was playing clean up there so i wanted to make sure that you guys got to see that um and what else was i going to tell you right mm, i can't remember what i was just gonna say i was gonna tell you guys something about what i just did so that you could in case you had any questions or anything anyway fun project things are getting close to getting done so all right let's see what you guys are up to hang out for a little bit longer you guys got to get to your day and everything appreciate you guys tuning in all right Okay. Thanks, God wins. Thanks. Max gets to see the walls go up. Yeah, the ceiling. M hopefully, most of that will be done before he gets here. Just get that wood out of the way. Oh, that's what I was going to tell you guys. Okay, so many of you asked about the kitchen. You're like, where's your kitchen? Well, I can't afford cabinets yet and a sink. So, I got to wait to put the kitchen in. This is, and this is the part of the it drives me nuts because I, this like I explained to you guys in past shows. This is how I am. I like to have everything done, but I'm going to have to wait. I'm going to have to be patient, right? I mean, I'm blessed to have what I have. I'm not going to complain to God. Oh, I don't have a kitchen, but you got to make do. So all there is in the kitchen right now, I do not have a kitchen sink. I have to do my dishes in the bathtub. But that's okay. Um, I don't know how it's going to work when Max gets here because Max generates a lot of dishes. <laughs> so anyways... Uh, so what's in the kitchen now is just my range, my oven and range, which I cook on. I have a toaster oven and a microwave, my coffee maker, the rice maker, and I bought 
a couple shelves. They're basically like metal shelves that you can put together yourself from Amazon. And that's where I'm storing my food and my dishes. And there's also a chest freezer in that corner too. You can actually rewind the uh, you can actually rewind this video. And when I scroll past the kitchen, you'll see everything that I just talked about in there. So eventually I'll get my my kitchen together. I'm not too worried about it yet. Um, I did get a refrigerator yesterday that I'm or that I ordered and will be here just before he gets here so that when he gets here we can go grocery shopping because you know Max likes to cook so and I like to cook too it's just hard cooking just for yourself right and so Max will cook for both of us which is kind of cool and he's a pretty good cook you know he he can make Chinese food he can you know Indian food he's really good cook so because he used to work at restaurants when he was younger you know in the kitchen so all right what else is going on? Yeah, I'm not going to do a dishwasher. Just never have been a dishwasher fan. Uh, some people swear on them, but it's just more stuff to break. More stuff to spend money on. I'm just kind of a basics kind of person. If you if you haven't been able to tell by looking at the inside of my place, I don't like all the bells and whistles. I just like the basics because it's easy to fix. Get a collapsible camping sink in a bucket. Oh, that's a great idea, Tonnet. Thank you. That way I don't have to do dishes in the bathtub. Yeah. That's a great idea. And just like... But then you got you need a water source, you know. So it's... it's you need really need... For me, I need running water to actually do... You know... To, to, to actually wash dishes. Brandon said, thoughts on the sub... Yeah, we talked about that yesterday, yesterday's show, Brandon. So, yeah, we were on that pretty quick. Um, we thought the sub fell into some kind of a portal. Or that they were investigating a portal. So, um, yesterday's show, you can check that out. We talk all about that. All right. Add the basketball goal yet. Yes, the basketball... Uh, that's an arcade basketball. I <laughs> got, and uh, I can't remember where I got that. I think I ordered that on Amazon too, and it's got side by side goals on it. So it's really fun, and it's electronic, so it actually keeps score. You can do player versus player, and you just stand next to each other. And when you shoot the ball, the balls come back to you because it's on like a, a slide. So the balls slide right back to you down into the front, and then you just keep shooting and shooting. It's really fun. I'll have to do a. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll film me doing the actual one of the just one player games on there. It's a lot of fun. I've gotten pretty good at it. So I can actually uh, max out the score before the time runs out. So if it's 90 seconds, I can get up to 99. Um, 99, right? <laughs> I can get up to 99, the score of 99, and then it stops. It ends the game before the time runs out, right? And yeah, and I can do like almost two shots per second sometimes, or at least one shot. I can make one shot per second. It's just muscle memory. That's all it is. Like you pretty much know your arms and hands know exactly where to place the ball to make all the baskets. And it's a lot of fun. So I'll put the GoPro on and I'll do, I'll do a, uh, and I'll show you guys how, how I play. Um, when you, if you do three of those games back to back, and especially if you're competing against someone, it's better than any workout that I've ever had. I mean, it. You're by the end of it, your shoulders are killing you. So a lot of good, fun exercise, a little bit of competition. So, yeah. Now, what are you guys' thoughts on uh, relationships and stuff that I that I said a little bit earlier? For those of you that stuck around, do you guys think that that it changed everything when the world went online? Did it affect relationships in a negative way? I really feel like it did. And I remember after my second divorce and I was trying to date. And I that's when I first started seeing this. This was all the way back in 20, uh, you know, for, uh, 14, 2013, 2014. When I started trying to date online and I was like, this is impossible. Like, I'm not finding people that are comparable to me, you know, like. I'm always finding people that are just not even close to 
you know, and not that that matters, but it's like I was just bottom of the barrel dating. It was crazy and it got depressing. Like it was all like I would I would find myself compromising and I'm not I'm not a picky person. I just wanted someone that wasn't on medications like I wasn't on medications and maybe didn't smoke, you know, simple things, you know, and was at least self-sufficient. I didn't need anyone making as much money as I did, but at least they, they're, you know, you look at their life and they were able to hold down an apartment or something and had a decent job. And like, I just wasn't finding that at all. And then what I found were the women that I, that I wanted to date, they were dating guys making two and three times as much money as they were. So it was almost like the whole process was skewed and it was skewed against men is what I found. Like, all the eligible women were going after guys making a lot more money or guys that were running multiple businesses or own multiple homes or whatever. And so it just was really weird for me. And it was really an upsetting process. And also, you know, of course, during those years, I was still paying child support. So much of my income was going towards, you know, finishing paying my child support for Max. So I was broke. I was broke for like... Gosh, eight years I was broke. Try working for free. Well, you're not working for free. You're raising your children. But when the judge gives the other half the custody and you have to pay that person to raise your children, it's a very difficult thing to do. You know, it's very difficult financially and also emotionally. But, um, you know, move past that phase of my life. And now God's blessed me with lots of blessings. But, um, yeah, that whole dating process was very, very discouraging. So, that's just some of my thoughts on that. And I say these things not to blame any side. I'm not blaming women. I'm not blaming men. I'm, there's, it's just the process. It's what's happened to our society. It's the fact that they've essentially changed the dynamic of how people meet, how people fall in love. It's completely changed and it the odds seem almost impossible. So when you do find someone and you find something real, you should jump on it because you might not know when that opportunity might come around again. Also, I've seen like a lot of people with just crazy problems. And this isn't recently. This was I'm talking in the past. Just, just crazy emotional problems, um, just insurmountable um, issues in their life. Uh I've seen lots of addictions and I'm not just talking, you know, addictions to pharmaceutical medications There are people addicted to all kinds of things, medications, um, weed. And it's just, you know, it's crazy. It's, it's almost impossible. And I fear for the new generation. I think about what Max just went through, you know, putting all this effort into trying to make something work and then only to find out that he was lied to. And it was a big lie. Like, she said she was in the hospital, and then he called her mother, and she's like, I don't know what you're talking about. She's not in the hospital. She's in her room. And she just lied. And I told my son, I said, look, son, people lie, okay? But he's like he's like how I used to be. He reminds me so much of myself, because he's like scorched earth. He's like, when, when he feels betrayed, he goes scorched earth. And I used to be like that. I'm not like that anymore. But I used to be like that. I would get so upset when someone betrayed me. Why? Because I put so much effort into the people that I loved. And when they betray you or lie straight to your face, or they don't appreciate what you're doing for them, they don't appreciate you know that you have committed your life to that person, you get very upset about that. And I, so I understand why he felt the way he did, but he put so much effort, bless his heart. He moved to California, stayed with his sister for a few months and his sister's like, you got to go. And he was like, really? So then he worked extra hours. He got a raise and he got his own apartment just so he can try to bring this girl here. And then she just lied to him. Now, of course, this is one side of the story. Okay. I'm not roasting this girl. But um, obviously, there were probably other factors. Sometimes we become codependent on people. I know I had that problem early in my life. When I was young, I was very codependent. And part of that codependency is why you react that way when someone lies to you. 
Okay, because you become so emotionally codependent that you feel deeply betrayed and you literally go scorched earth on that person, you know, and you start doing weird things like, you know, telling the whole world that this person cheated on you. It's like the whole world doesn't want to know that. <laughs> right. Nobody cares. Or, you know, and all that stuff. So this is what's. What's been going on is a little bit inner workings of my experience. And I tell you these things to encourage both sides um, and also to hold both sides accountable. Okay. Because we need to talk about these things, right? I wish that, uh, you know, some of the churches that I, that I went to would talk about more about these things and be honest and be raw about these things. Right. Instead of covering everything up and making everything look like, oh, the Christian experience is just a Pollyanna experience. Well, it can only be that if these churches have real conversations about real stuff, like the internet dynamic and how that's changed relationships. Like someone, sh pastors should be talking about this. They should be the, the people in the church who have had long 40 and 50 year relationships should be the counselors for the younger people. They should, that should be their job if they want to volunteer. Do one-on-one -on -one counseling with young people. And before you get married, it should be, you should be like counseling with these people for six months or so. Every week. So they could go through all the scenarios and obstacles that they went through to be together as long as they were. That's what I needed when I was young. That would have maybe saved my marriages. Right? So we don't have that kind of support for the young people. They're literally feeling in the dark. They have no idea what's going on. And my heart goes out to them. My heart goes out to them. So those are just some thoughts. My friend married a guy that claimed he was a bodybuilder and owned a successful gym. He was nothing but a steroid addict. Oh, wow. So men lie too? Absolutely. Um, you see that a lot. There are men that uh, that lie and pump themselves up about who they are and then they're not anything like that in terms of what they've accomplished but why do people keep falling for that shouldn't a man's value not be about how many muscles he has and how many gems he owns shouldn't a man's value just be that he's kind and loving and not a narcissist so it goes both ways you know men are criticized for going after women because they're attracted to them but then the women go after narcissists. So it goes both ways. Many so much so that they've become disenfranchised from the whole process because they got burned by a couple of narcissist men who ruined their feeling of love and trust. So there's enough blame to go around to everybody. But I don't blame us and I don't blame women. I blame the system and how it's set up and the portal that we went through. This whole online get whatever you want by going online thing and having way too many choices and way too many options that can become a problem and so people cannot settle they don't have the staying power now it's a little bit different out here in the ozarks you know i'm not going to say that nobody has a tv here and that, you know but there are more people who have unplugged from all that out here than i've ever seen in my life it's like living in the 1980s out here it's literally like the 80s and, and 90s, how things used to be. You see the children playing in the street. You see all the things we used to, to, to do. It, it, it happens here. So, all right, you guys, enough of that. Hopefully this conversation helped everybody um, on some level, um, you know, to, to, to get through this, you know. Not all women are bad. Not all men are bad. Okay. I feel like going in these last days, uh, we're going to want to be paired up with our other half. You think you can make it alone. I know that many of you women out there have been through a lot of hard times. You've been used, abused, taken advantage of. But think of that as a learning experience. Now you know what to look for. Now you know what not to get. Now you know that it's not about, you know, a person like love bombing you, you know, and making you feel a certain way, that it's about what the constitution of that person is. What is their makeup? Do they put their 
money where their mouth is? Do they put their actions along with, you know, who they say they are? Do they constantly talk about money and all the stuff they have? Or do they talk about what kind of person that they are? Or can you see what kind of person they are by their friends and the people around them? So these are just things to think about. These are the things that nobody ever told me. I had to figure all this stuff out at this time in my life. And so I just want to share that with you because that's part of my job here is to help counsel the body of Christ and help us to soften our hearts if need be. We don't want to walk around with hardened hearts and our hearts closed off the possibilities of things. I've talked to several adult men my age and younger who I've met personally here who come to visit from the channel and they're single and they're like, why, why am I still single? I'm a man of God. I love God. You know, where are all the eligible women? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I can't help you. <laughs> and so, you know, he, he, I'm like, well, I don't even know what to tell you. You know, like, and I've met these people. They're very nice people. You know, they're not ugly. Uh, they're fit. Um, they have it together. They have decent jobs. But um, for some reason, the hearts are all closed off right now. So I don't know what that's about. But um, it is what it is. And we'll get through it. But I'm telling you, as we go into these last days, we talked a little bit about this. What people are going to need is both halves because each half is valuable. The women are the nurturers, the gardeners. They bring love into the relationship. The man is the head of the household. He is submitted to Christ the wife is submitted to him, and the whole world goes round and round. That is the natural order of the way God set it up. That is the natural order. And so, you got to ask yourself, why isn't that happening now in the body of Christ? Why are we so afraid? Why are we so afraid? And I've gone through the same process. I've been afraid too, you know, and we need to like change that, I think. Because there are going to come times where, you know, I'm out here and I want to, there's a lot of things I want to do, but I don't want to do them until I have my other half. When I have my other half, then I'll get into some of these other projects. This is something I want to do with my other half. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to claim or believe that I can make it through alone when that's not the natural order that God put us here for, right? So... Those are just some thoughts, you guys. I love each and every one of you. If something I said today gets through, um, I really hope it does. Give your life to Jesus Christ. Of course, I think I've shown you guys enough proof in the beginning of this show with the decodes about doorways and Christ's sacrifice to really prove that he is who he says he is. And most of you here are saved, but I know there are a lot of people that watch this channel who are not saved yet. Or who are more edged toward the new age. And maybe you can swing the pendulum back this way. And finally, finally submit to Jesus. Because this is it. We're getting into the last days. I love you guys. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Take care and be safe everybody.